You know, there have been many, many nights where I've fallen asleep feeling grateful for the fact that tonight I'm not sitting on long crappy train rides to a dodgy station where I feel cold and very unsafe by myself. I feel thankful that tonight I don't have to be working on random night shifts, tolerating crappy customers, toxic bosses, or pretty much spending my time in a way that doesn't give me any investment of return. I'm feeling thankful that tonight, even on the rainiest and stormiest day, there is a roof over my head and I don't have to be stranded in the wind outside somewhere feeling like life is so unfair to me. Even though I used to take so many things for granted, but there came a day where I was on my way to my friend's home and I was walking past a train station during rush hours, seeing people so busy, working tirelessly, having to be there until their shift ends, while I myself was just only walking past and I was on my way to spend quality time in a beautiful, gigantic home located in the wealthiest part of Sydney where in the evenings, I saw the sun set by the harbour view in the companionship of a very kind-hearted friend. That's when it started to click to me how wealthy I really am, despite the fact that not every single thing in my life is turning out the way that I want it to today. And I'm sure that many of you experience the same thing, where your bank account may not be ideal, or your job situation may not be ideal, but some part of your life is just miraculously privileged without a reason. Yet we all still spend so much time dwelling on useless things like, where is he? Why hasn't he texted me back? Does he love me? Is his friend jealous of me? Do I belong in this group? Do I look good enough amongst this group? If these very same people would just look at the exact things they already have, all these pointless thoughts that don't add any value to your life would instantly vanish and you will have so much more quality time to spend in a way that gives meaning to your life. It took me two years for my life to completely fall apart, but now I'm at a place where I finally realize what true wealth means. And even though I'm still learning on the journey, but I'm very proud to be sharing this with you guys. So let's get started. One, you can't take your Chanel bag to the grave with you. So stop lowering your worth for it. So many times we diminish our own powers to look great in front of other people without even acknowledging that our inherent self is worthy as it is. For example, as a young kid, I learned that in order for my mom to fit in with her group of friends, it was almost this subliminal message that you needed to have a first-hand Mercedes to drive in order for you to belong in this group and for people to not outcast you or look down on you. And so every single time she went to socialize with these friends, she always had to drive the first-hand Mercedes. And not only that, if you guys are going out to socialize, then it's also a prerequisite that you have a Chanel handbag or some sort of luxury item to define who you are. When in reality, just because you carry these designer bags or drive a luxury car, it doesn't mean that anybody is truly genuine towards you. But luckily, in that society, she did find her genuine friends who loved her exactly the way she was and not because she was carrying luxury items or drove a fancy car. But the thing that makes us feel so powerless is that the minute that we only have a $20 Kmart bag to carry, the minute that we lose access to these luxury items, we start to see ourselves really, really poorly. We start to feel worthless, defeated, and not good enough just because we don't own certain items that define people's status level. Now, honestly, I'm also a fan of luxury items, and I would always prefer to carry a high quality designer bag versus just a cheap everyday bag. But the thing is, till this day for two years now, I have a $20 Kmart bag that I carry everywhere, and it feels comfortable on my shoulder. And no matter how much the bag costs, I take care of how I look and how I show up in the world. So I myself already feel expensive, with or without any expensive items. Yet so many of us spend money in order to find external solutions to make ourselves feel expensive. When all of this is an internal game, how you talk to yourself, how you show up, how you are able to value your own worth and don't associate yourself with toxic environment is what makes you truly expensive. So what this experience also taught me is the value of walking away from any environments that don't make you feel expensive. Whether it's people that use you for your free labor, people that don't truly value your skill set, people that don't truly value your presence and how much your time is worth. If you're able to nail this part alone, then no luxury items or fancy cars will make you feel inadequate when you don't own them today. 
And even if you do own them, it will only enhance how you already feel valuable. But it won't make you feel over the moon like I need this thing in order for me to feel like I'm worth millions of dollars. And honestly, guys, if you constantly feel inadequate, that your Instagram feed doesn't look as complete or as luxurious as influencers Instagram feeds then you are already living in inner poverty every day because that is where I used to be in my early 20s. I've never appreciated how lucky I've always been to be able to smell the scent of croissants, to be able to feel its flakiness and even taste the flavors of different croissants in different cafes. A lot of $7.50 croissant is not accessible to many, many, many people in this world. Yet we take for granted this most simple thing that don't you already feel wealthy that you get to taste the flavors of all these expensive breads. If you are not able to realize how lucky you are to be able to easily afford a $7.50 croissant and enjoy the flavor of it, then that is what inner poverty truly feels like. It feels like never having enough, never being enough, because you are choosing that you are below a Chanel handbag, that you are below a Mercedes, or you even have to purchase a secondhand version because you don't acknowledge that I am enough if I don't have these things today. It doesn't mean I don't aspire to have it, but when I don't have it, I still feel complete as I am. Which leads to the second part, and that is enough is way richer than excessive. I want you guys to imagine going to a restaurant and you are in the process of losing weight or shredding. So you are taken to this awesome fine dining restaurant and let's just say they offer you a 12 course meal. But because you are in the process of shredding and losing weight, your stomach only feels comfortable with eight course meal on a maximum basis. The problem is you feel this scarcity mindset that if I don't finish the whole 12 course, then I'm wasting money. So during the first two course, you feel excited the appetizers, the entrees, oh, they really excite me. When you get to the main course, you start to feel like, oh yeah, it looks kind of good, but not really worth the price of $40 per plate, but it's still pretty awesome. And then you start to keep progressing and progressing along. And by the eighth course, you're starting to feel like, you know what? My stomach feels comfortable. I am full now. I can stop. But then when you start to get to the ninth and 10th course, your stomach starts to feel like, I can't really savor that flavor of the dessert. I can't fully savor the salty flavor because I'm starting to feel really full. And by the 11th and 12th course, probably the extra dessert, now you are truly feeling like I am uncomfortable. This tastes good, but that doesn't make me feel good. I don't feel rich anymore. I'm starting to feel bloated. I'm feeling stuffed up. I'm feeling suffocated. That is what aiming for excessive wealth feels like. There is a euphoric high of this concept of excessive wealth, where you are filthy rich, where there's way more than enough for you. But I guarantee that it doesn't feel any different than you overindulging in a 12 course meal when you yourself can only fit an eight course meal maximum. Now, as somebody who's pretty ambitious herself, I am never the type of person to say, just enough money is better than excessive money. But what I'm trying to say is that when you realize your enough point and you are able to feel enough for where you are, that's how you feel rich every single day, regardless of your bank account is showing you brokenness or wealth. When you have excessive wealth, there's also this fear of losing it, especially if you flute your way through or the success came too fast, because that was what I experienced before personally. See, I've always grown up being very privileged, but I had a very poor relationship with money. And the day I was starting to earn beyond my means and I was spending beyond my means, I felt this guilty feeling of, I don't truly deserve this. I haven't worked extremely, extremely hard to be able to afford this lifestyle. So I was starting to make decisions that sabotage me from having that dream lifestyle that I already had. And that was because the feeling was excessive. It was too much at the time I wasn't ready to keep it. So that's the beauty of incremental growth and knowing what you can handle, taking what's enough for you and feeling appreciative of what you have. That is what wealth truly feels like. When you are able to accept your current progress and find one or two things about what you have today as being so perfect. For example, I realized that there are no expensive creams in this world that I would prefer over having a clear and glowing skin 
when I'm not wearing foundation. I don't want to be owning $500 worth of foundation when my actual skin without it is full of pimples because I'm using too much product and I'm irritating my skin. So do you understand that working on your basic canvas is so much more better than only topping up with accessories? It's kind of like having this blank beautiful canvas where no matter what you draw on it, it looks beautiful because the canvas on its own is strong. So that's why if you feel like my job underpays me, my salary sucks, my life condition sucks, everything sucks, which I feel all the time up to this day, honestly, then at least try to find one or two good things that is perfect in your life right now. Whether it's your skin condition, whether it's your body figure, whether it's the relationship with the guy that you love, whether it's your friendship, your family, anything that is already perfect right now. And I want you to really appreciate and appreciate the value of it because the act of appreciating the one or two things that are perfect will then create a snowballing effect in all the other areas of your life that you feel inadequate towards. So yes, of course, if you still have Instagram and your account is flooded with influencers who are flexing material items, you are going to feel poor. Or if you're choosing to hang out with people where the prerequisite to be in this group is to drive a first-hand Mercedes and have a designer item, or the prerequisite is that you need to have a hundred grand Instagram followers to fit in, of course, you're going to feel inadequate. So even though aspiring to have those things is a great thing, but the most important part of it is that you grow along that journey. You grow on the journey of you building a hundred grand Instagram followers. You are growing on the journey of earning money to then afford that designer bag, but without squandering your wealth for it, without sacrificing your mental well-being or your self-esteem just to carry a designer item, but by growing yourself, elevating your mindset, elevating your skill set to that having that designer goal is a top up to the already amazing canvas that you built for yourself. Next, Experience is what we really crave and not just the fat bank account. See, growing up, I've always had a poor relationship with what I see in my bank account, but I'm somehow so lucky to always have access to beautiful experiences without paying for it. I don't exactly know how I've done it, but I do know that I'm a very disciplined person and I always work towards my goals. So maybe that energy then attracts beautiful experiences that other people may otherwise have to pay for. And when I think about it, I start to make up scenarios like, let's just say I really want to go to this resort in an exotic island and I want to spend my time with the guy that I really, really love and all the conditions are perfect. But somehow I'm not able to convert the exchange rate. So let's just say I have a million dollars in my bank account, but that million dollars cannot be exchanged for the resort that I want to go to because somehow the exchange rate doesn't work. Meaning that the bank account that I see cannot pay for the experience I truly, truly wanted. If that was truly the case, then would that $1 million still have value as much as I thought it did? Of course, it's very important that we use money to exchange for basic food, basic rent, basic bills, basic living costs. But let's imagine that this thing that you're seeing right now cannot be exchanged for the exact beautiful, blissful, happy experience with the man that you love on an exotic island. Will that seven figures still have meaning or have power over you in the way that you thought that it would? Yet realizing this, so many of us sacrifice our mental health. We lower our dignity. We diminish our own powers to tolerate bullshit, keep bad people in our life, take lower value actions and don't really prioritize our well-being because we believe that the harder we grind, the more we suffer, the greater the payoff will be. When in actuality, you see so many people working so hard and not only does their zero don't increase, but they still don't have access to that blissful, happy experience. And why is that? Because the energy of scarcity, over hustling, overworking, overdoing, doesn't translate into the beautiful, peaceful and harmonious experience that you truly, truly want. But this also works the same with laziness and stagnation. You can't just see yourself as being lazy, stagnant and not doing anything and expect yourself to have the experience of bliss, success and happiness. What I'm trying to say is that wealth is an internal game and you have to align yourself, your belief systems, your actions and your decisions to match the exact reality that you want. What I'm also trying to say is that just because you see seven 
seven zeros in your bank account, there is no guarantee that you can exchange the seven figures for a very peaceful, stable, healthy, meaningful life. If you don't make the right decisions with your money, that seven zero that you see could be spent on the wrong people, the wrong experiences, the wrong places, squandering your money on overhead costs with your business, feeling like I don't have enough in my business, so I have to invest in more equipment that I don't need, squandering your wealth on all the wrong relationships from people that want to leech off your wealth and use you for the money that you have. So let's just say you're a guy and you have all these zeros in your bank account, but inside you don't truly feel worthy. So then you might make decisions where those bank account figures go to places like gold diggers, people that don't truly love you, people that just want to be in a relationship with you for your money, for the access to the privileged experience. And that's because you don't feel like I have enough. So therefore my energy is attracting leeches, energy vampires, people that will use you just because you have these and you want peacefulness. You want a loving, beautiful relationship. You want a sense of inner stability. But if you're not embodying that state when you don't have these zero figures, it's not going to manifest itself even if you have many, many zeros in your bank account. And I can guarantee you that because I've seen it before with my personal bank account. Even though when I had more money, when I was normalizing inner poverty, when I kept thinking that if I have this, I will be more worthier. If I have this guy in the way I want to have him, then I will feel worthier. And in the end, I lost everything because I felt inner poverty. I couldn't feel enough with where I am. So every single time you're thinking that these zeros are going to pay for the true love, the true genuine connection, the true genuine lifelong friendships, the fulfilling experience, if you think that these seven zeros can pay for all those things, which yes, it can pay for convenience, luxury and fleeting happiness. But I can guarantee you that you can't really pay your way to have a real genuine connection. Those things are built from within, a true bond not by paying somebody to please be genuine with me. Please love me and I'll pay you too. Not pretend to love me, but actually, actually love me. So yes, money does buy happiness, but money kind of buys fleeting happiness, external happiness. Whereas the internal happiness is that if you don't have access to this thing, you can still somehow access that feeling state and that energy will then manifest itself into free gifts, free experiences encountering with a good man, having beautiful experiences with a great man without having to pay that much for it because he's the one that's taking care of me, paying for the meal and I contribute towards dessert if you know what I mean. This is something that if you have the wealthy energy, it will manifest itself in your experience. Even if your bank account says I have zero dollars, but somebody else will somehow still make you feel worthy if you feel worthy from within. Next, let's not be hypocrite to ourselves. Now during my mid twenties, I've come across so many people who have this amazing personal brand. They created this fake image that they embody in order to charge people for their service, but their life outside of their personal brand is completely different. They make people pay a shit ton of money for their service, but in reality, they cannot embody what they teach to other people themselves. And I find that to be so ridiculous. Of course, yes, we are still all humans and we have basic desires. We want to chase fleeting happiness. We are all still full of egos ourselves. But the question is, can you contain that ego? Are you able to be the exact same when you are not on camera as you are when you are on camera? If you are being a hypocrite to yourself, then you are still living in inner poverty. When you don't have other people boosting your validation because you can't find a sense of enoughness with such privilege that you already have. And of course, everyone can say, well, I have this life problem. I'm actually in debt. I'm actually not rich. Every money that I make goes to my debt, whatever. But still, if you are teaching other people how to be content, how to be a leader, how to be a better person, then at least you should try to embody what you teach in your own personal life. When other people are not seeing you off camera, you should also try your best to be that person. Because when you are that person, that's where the true wealth lies. When you are able to get out of your comfort zone and really embody the boring practices that get 
get you the true success that you want. For example, I don't always eat healthy. And in fact, majority of my meal is not healthy, but I have very strong portion control. So for me to be a hypocrite and tell you that all you guys should eat is plant-based or vegetables, when I myself don't eat plant-based, but I'm still pretty healthy, then that's a hypocritical thing of me to do. So the main point of this is that I see many people easily having access to the luxuries that other people have to work a whole month for just to be able to pay for that fine dining course. I've seen people pretend to be rich in front of other people but once the show is over, they still embody the scarcity in a poverty versions of themselves. And I find that to be so stupid because we are the operant power of our reality. And instead of you faking your rich image to impress other people, why don't you spend your time impressing yourself, impressing your subconscious mind that you are a transformed person inside out? Why don't you embody your own discipline? Why don't you embody the self image of somebody who could really win against all their petty desires? If even though these practices are not fulfilling in the moment. But when you compound this practice on a weekly, monthly and yearly basis where you can contain your ego, you can focus on impressing yourself. You are fine with other people seeing you as a loser as long as you don't see yourself as a loser. That is what wealth truly feels like. It's liberation. It's internal freedom where your image is not dependent on anybody's judgments of you, but of your own judgment towards yourself. And that's how money flows to you. I know of people who spend tens and thousands of dollars just to upgrade their business or spend money on cars or spend money on a new suit. And I personally know one individual who always rocks up in a fancy tailor suit. And at the time I met him, he was never happy. And I completely understand that corporate politics, family conditions, all these external environments can make you feel crap about yourself. But then it's all up to you how you are going to interpret your life adversity. It's up to you to feel content and appreciate the tailored suit that you already have. The 200 grand salary that you already have that other people have to work so, so hard for, even though you are not more skilled than them, but you just have more access to better environments and opportunities than them to be in that position. That's why guys, I'm a very big fan of you being who you are when you are by yourself and being that same person Person when you're seeing other people because if you are able to just be one person the true authentic core self that you are with yourself to other people then your life is just amazing you never have to split your image you don't have to split your personality you don't have to drain yourself to pretend to be more smiley more bubbly or more authentic because you are so happy with yourself that if you guys don't like my authentic self I'm totally okay with that because I would never abandon myself to create a fake life an alternate life where it's not actually real. Now let's move on to negativity is what keeps you stuck in inner poverty. This is very similar to the point before where if you are going to be the different version of you in front of other people, you might as well try to impress your subconscious mind or impress your inner self concept that you can just be one person in front of everyone. The true authentic you that doesn't have to put on a mask, pretend to be likable, lose your own frame and diminish your own power just to earn money from other people. This goes the same with job interviews and who you work with. If you can't be your confident self in job interviews because you are going to overpower your boss, if you can't be the true authentic you who doesn't want to be extroverted, but your boss or your managers don't accept you, then you should not have to pretend to be an extrovert to fit into that work culture in order for you to earn a yearly salary, right? And this all comes from the inner game where you work on your own energy. You come back to your own frame to the point where you are constantly attracting people that are accept you exactly for where you are. But this all comes down with how you talk to yourself on a day to day basis. Negativity is that actual thing where it cripples you little by little per day. In the short term basis, you don't see how little bits of negative news, negative conversations, negative encountering with toxic people can truly affect you. But in the long run, it is the very reason why you don't get the salary raise. It is the very reason why your business doesn't take off. It is the very reason why you don't elevate your income Income, your life potential or meet better partners. These strings of negative inner conversations where you are constantly listening to the news of people murdering other people. You are consuming all these news that are not relevant to your day to day life. It is not relevant for me to know who is causing what trouble. I'm trying to take care of my own self. So why do I have to know who's causing other people drama? If you are listening to your co worker, your toxic boss or that toxic friend that constantly trauma dumps onto you, and you are doing this to yourself week after week 
after week. I can guarantee that at some point, when you try to do creative work, when you try to practice your job interview skills, when you try to elevate your income, you're gonna start seeing yourself like, why do I deserve this? when my patterns don't reflect me being the best version of myself? Why do I deserve this promotion when I'm spending my time in a very loose way? I'm allowing so much negativity to enter my field and I don't feel in control of that. So why do I deserve to be the leader of that industry? Why do I deserve to teach other people how to be positive when I am not positive? when I'm in my own presence. So do you see why a lot of people, including my past self, we work so damn hard. We spend so many hours working, but we don't earn more money because subconsciously, we know what actions we took every single day. We know that we are allowing negative people to enter our space. So therefore we start to experience idea blockages. We start to procrastinate. We make the wrong decisions on how to spend our weekends. We start to go and crave alcohol. We start to crave social socializing, casual sex, and all these things. So if we are making day-to-day -day decisions that are only congruent to our five out of 10 self, we're not gonna feel that elevated feeling where, you know what, I feel confident to ask for a raise. But not only that, I feel confident to leave this place if I don't get a raise. I feel confident to walk away immediately from any place that diminishes my value. But if we normalize having a crappy internal environment, there is no way that you can really start attracting real abundance, peaceful, feeling, free access to beautiful experiences, kind-hearted people, genuine connections. If you yourself are not cleaning your mental space, making your internal environment a beautiful garden, making your time with yourself a positive one, where you're always encouraging yourself with positive inner dialogue, supporting your own growth, cheering yourself on and telling yourself how well you are doing already. If you are always listening to the news, I can guarantee you, you don't always tell yourself, well done for showing up today. You're thinking now reality sucks, everything sucks because that's just how life is. So if you guys are feeling a blockage as to why everything is so stuck in my reality, the very first thing you can truly do for yourself is to remove the negative vampire energies from your life. And if you are determined to really stay positive, I guarantee you that the feeling of being free, being wealthy with how you spend your time, being wealthy with how you talk to yourself, will attract you to experiences where you feel even more wealthier and wealthier each day, regardless if you have the actual money to pay for those experiences or not. Now, the last point may seem very common sense, but appreciating your life exactly for where you are, no matter how broke and a failure you are today. And trust me guys, I've done this for myself and even though your ideal life or your ideal bank account figure may not show itself to you even within 12 months of you working really, really hard, but you'll actually start to see all these little shifts that happen in your life. And if you don't take note of them, that is what will keep you stuck. My small shifts were that every single time I walk away from environments that don't serve me, I start to feel more free. And every time I start to feel more free, I also start to write better. So I'm appreciating that every single time I let go of one negative energy vampire or a source of negative energy vampire, I am now increasing my own potential to be a better writer to be a better YouTuber, to be a better speaker. And I don't know how it works, but it somehow works. But that's because I'm appreciating that just because I'm not a multi multi-millionaire by society's definition of a millionaire, but that doesn't stop me from feeling like a millionaire. Every single time I work on myself, I do the internal work and put myself back in my own frame. So let's just say society's definition of a millionaire is that you see the actual zeros in your bank account. But believe it or not, guys, during all these times where I was bank account broke, I still created so many beautiful memories with the guy that I love. And that in itself makes me feel very rich. And the best part of all is that I'm not spending thousands and thousands of dollars to have these experiences. I just embody my own discipline and do the inner work to make myself feel abundant feel loving, feel attractive and receptive to all these beautiful experiences. So if I kept focusing on thoughts like, well, I'm 30 now, why don't I have a ring? Why don't I own this house? Why am I not a multimillionaire? Why don't I have this job title? Why don't I own 10 designer items? Why don't I have expensive dresses to wear? Why don't I have $500 skincare sets for myself to nourish my skin? Well, the thing is my skin is so beautiful without a $500 skin set. 
And how liberating does that feel when you're like, I'm not dependent on anything outside of me to be who I am right now because it's created from within. But that all starts from you appreciating all the little things that show up along the way. So I used to be in such a state of poverty where I keep waiting for the day where the money will show itself to me. When will I make the money? When will I get this job? When will my channel blow up? When will all this happen? But along the way, there were so many beautiful things that just keep popping up out of nowhere and I wasn't planning for it. So these days I make it a habit to appreciate every single tiny thing that miraculously pops up every time I feel like my discipline is being rewarded. So let's just say my friend invites me to a beautiful dinner and we have a beautiful time spent during that dinner together and she says don't worry Patty it's my shout. That's already such a wealthy life I'm living. I'm accessing these beautiful experiences because I chose to increase my own value and I bring value to other people's lives in other ways besides just paying money for it. So the next time you feel like my life really sucks, which is also something that I feel time to time where I'm dipping, I want you to really look around yourself and be like, you know what? Tonight the sky is going to turn pink. It's going to be a pinkish orange sky when it turns five o'clock. And why is that? Because I choose to appreciate the sunset, which doesn't cost me any money to see such a divine view of a beautiful orange sky. It doesn't cost me money to walk on a luscious green grass and really be present in the moment, smelling how that grass feels, smelling how the flower feels, feeling so grateful that I even have access to green grasses and luxurious, beautiful gardens where the flowers are planted by my neighbors. So I don't even have to go to a flower park or pay money to access beautiful flowers. So as you can see, all this is up to your interpretation of your reality. Are you going to choose to feel inner poverty no matter where you are? Even when you're at the beach, even when you're in the wealthiest suburb of a rich country, are you still gonna be like, I can't see these beautiful waters. I can't see these boats. I can't see the clear sky at all because my bank account sucks, because everything sucks, because these people don't please me, because I'm getting old, because I'm inadequate. Therefore, I can't see the beautiful water in Rose Bay. I can't feel the beautiful ocean water on my skin when I'm swimming. I can't feel grateful that my body is slim and beautiful because my life problem is so immense. That is how you keep yourself stuck in the state of poverty. And no matter how much you have, you will never be able to escape that inner poverty until you decide that this is not who you are anymore. You must decide that you are the version of you who always see riches in anything that is in front of you. No matter if it's the birds, the poodle, the cats, anything that makes you smile, those things already make you wealthy. That is what wealth means to you. It's your internal state, your interpretation of where you are and appreciating exactly what you have while still working on your goals. Appreciating doesn't mean that, okay, I have enough, so I'm just gonna laze around and waste my life. Appreciating means that I'm still working every day towards where I want to be, but along the way, I can see the birds. I can see the cute poodles. I can see how the guy that I love is still in my life today. All of these things add up. The more you can appreciate these small things, the more energy you will have to think of business ideas, to expand your potential, to go for the salary raise, to then create the exact life that you want. Regardless if you have six zeros, five zeros or four zeros, along the way, if you feel wealthy, regardless of what you're seeing here, your life is gonna be filled with very enriching and beautiful experiences without you ever having to chase for it. Okay, so this is Pat's platform and I hope you guys enjoy this video. Thank you. Bye-bye.